Today, the biggest data breach. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and properties with a distinctively Australian flavour. The Irish Council for Civil Liberties is Ireland's oldest independent human rights campaigning organisation. And they monitor and educate and campaign to secure human rights for everyone in Ireland, they say. And they've just released a report on the scale of real-time bidding data broadcasts in the US and Europe. And whilst Australia was not included, we can assume the same games are going on here. And in fact, I'll later talk about what's going on in Australia. But it's worth thinking about this. When you launch a website, as it loads, you often see initially blank boxes on the page, which are subsequently populated by advertisements tailored to you. Now that's a manifestation of real time bidding or RTB. And it operates behind the scenes on websites and apps. And it tracks what you're looking at, no matter how private or sensitive. And it records where you go. And every day it broadcasts this data about you to a host of companies continuously, enabling them to profile you. So their report presents the scale of the data breach for the first time, they said. RTB is the biggest data breach ever recorded, they say. It tracks and shares what people view online and their real world locations 294 billion times in the US, under 197 billion times in Europe every day. And they warn the figures presented for RTB broadcasts are on the low side because the industry figures on which they rely don't include Facebook or Amazon RTB broadcasts. They say, on average, a person in the US has their online activity and location exposed 747 times every day by the RTB industry. And in Europe, RTB exposes people's data 376 times a day. Europeans and US internet users' private data is sent to firms across the globe, including to Russia and China, without any means of controlling what is then done with the data. And the RTB industry generated 117 plus billion US dollars in Europe and US in 2021. US internet users' online behavior and locations are tracked and shared 107 trillion times a year. And Europeans' data were exposed 71 trillion times a year. And RTB firms broadcast RTB data widely. For example, Microsoft. X&R says it may send data to 1,647 other companies. Now, there's no way to restrict the use of RTB data after it's been broadcast. Data brokers use it to profile Black Lives Matter protesters. The US Department of Homeland Security and other agencies used it for warrantless phone tracking. And it was implicated in the outing of a gay Catholic priest through his use of Grindr. And ICCL uncover the sale of RTB data revealing likely survivors of sexual abuse. And they say, as we use the internet, the RTB system records and shares each of our behaviours many times a day. RTB tracks and broadcasts what a person in Germany is doing online roughly once per minute that they are online. And a person in Ohio will have their online activity and locations exposed 812 times every day. People in the US have their online activity and real world location exposed 57% more than people in Europe. And it's worth noting, by the way, that this data shows the number of data broadcasts sent about a person rather than the number of advertisements shown to them. Google, by the way, is the biggest RTB company. It tracks and shares what people in the US and Europe do online and where they are at a vast scale. Thousands of firms, 1,058 in Europe and 4,698 in the US, receive RTB data from Google. And Google broadcasts data such as what people are viewing or doing on a website or app and their hyper-local locations 42 billion times every day in Europe or 31 billion in the US. Now, this includes companies in Russia and China, and there's no way to know what those firms will then do with the data. And Google sends 19.6 million broadcasts about German internet users' online behaviour every minute when they're online. And most advertising on websites and apps are placed using RTB 
Advertisers spend $100 billion per year on RTB in the US and Europe, and the biggest RTB companies include Google and Microsoft. And the value of the RTB market, estimated programmatic advertising spending, was $91 billion in the US in 2021 and $26 billion in Europe in 2019. RTB persists despite a succession of controversies. Microsoft dramatically increased its involvement in RTB in December 2021 by buying the major RTB firm X&R from AT&T. Now, interestingly, in July 2020, US senators and members of the Congress wrote to the US Federal Trade Commission. They said, we write to urge the Federal Trade Commission to investigate widespread privacy violations by companies in the advertising technology industry that are selling private data about millions of Americans collected without their knowledge or consent from their phones, computers and smart TVs. In response to complaints by privacy advocates, privacy regulators in several European countries have, over the last year, opened investigations into an ad tech practice known as real-time bidding, or RTB. RTB is the process by which the digital ads we see every day are curated. For each ad, an auction takes place milliseconds before it is shown in an app or browser. The hundreds of participants in these auctions receive sensitive information about the potential recipient of the ad device, identifiers and cookies, location data, IP addresses and unique demographic and biometric information such as age and gender. Hundreds of potential bidders receive this information, even though only one, the auction winner, will use it to deliver an advertisement. Few Americans realize that companies are siphoning off and storing that bid stream data to compile exhaustive dossiers about them. These dossiers include their web browsing, location, and other data, which are then sold by data brokers to hedge funds, political campaigns, and even to the government without court orders. Unregulated data brokers have access to bid stream data and are using it in outrageous ways that violate Americans' privacy. For example, media reports recently revealed that Mobile Walla, a data broker and a buyer of bid stream data, use location and inferred race data to profile participants in recent Black Lives Matter protests. And moreover, Mobile Walla's CEO revealed in a podcast recorded back in 2017 that his company tracked Americans who visited places of worship and then built religious profiles based on that information. The identity of the companies that are selling bidstream data to Mobile Walla and countless other data brokers remains unknown. However, according to major publishers, companies are participating in RTB auctions solely to siphon off bidstream data without ever intending to win the auction and deliver an ad. And in a June 16, 2020 open letter of concern to the digital advertising industry, a group of major publishers whose website and apps supply the bid stream data to the RTB industry wrote that the current system allows for a significant data breach by companies gaining access to the real-time bidding infrastructure, i.e. the bid stream, for the sole purpose of harvesting both publisher-specific and audience-specific data. Americans never agreed to be tracked and have their sensitive information sold to anyone with a checkbook. Furthermore, there is no effective way to control these tools absent intervention by regulators and Congress. Technological roadblocks such as a browser privacy setting and ad blockers are routinely circumvented by advertising companies. This outrageous privacy violation must be stopped and the companies that are trafficking in America's illicitly obtained private data should be shut down. Accordingly, we urge the FTC to use its authority to conduct broad industry probes under Section 6B of the FTC Act to determine whether ad tech companies and their data broker partners have violated federal laws prohibiting unfair and deceptive business practices. Now, back here in Australia, the ACCC released a statement in January 2021, and it says a lack of competition and transparency in the digital advertising technology supply chain is impacting publishers, advertisers and consumers and needs to be addressed, according to the interim report for the ACCC's Digital Advertising Services Inquiry. The report examines the digital display advertising supply chain in Australia, which enables the near instantaneous delivery of $3.4 billion of digital display advertising opportunities on news, entertainment and other websites and apps each year. 
And in their final report into digital advertising services from 2021, digital advertising, they say, is increasingly important in Australia, with the amount spent on digital advertising in Australia growing substantially in recent years. The IAB estimates that between 2008 and 2020, spending on digital advertising quadrupled, growing from $1.7 billion to $9.5 billion. And display advertising made up around 40% of the total amount spent on digital advertising in Australia in 2020. We estimate that in 2020, 2.8 billion was spent on open display advertising in Australia, which is the focus of their inquiry. And that represents about 43% of total display advertising, with the rest being spent on closed channels. Within the open display advertising category, they estimate that approximately $1.7 billion was spent on programmatic advertising in Australia in 2020. And display advertising on mobile devices is a key way for advertisers to reach consumers. That reflects the growth of smartphones by consumers. In Australia in 2020, around 66% of display advertising spend was for advertising shown on mobile devices. Mobile apps are also an important source of ad inventory in the ad tech supply chain, and they estimate that advertising delivered via mobile apps made up 44% of advertiser expenditure on display ads sold programmatically in Australia in 2020. And between 2013 and 2020, the IAB estimates that the amount spent on display advertising shown on mobile devices, including mobile browsers and mobile apps in Australia, increased from $155 million to $2.4 billion. And it now represents over 66% of the total amount spent on display advertising. Video ads make up a large proportion of display advertising in Australia, and the IAB estimates that the spend on video display advertising was $1.9 billion in 2020. Video display advertising has also grown significantly in recent years from 18% of programmatic advertising expenditure in Australia in 2017 to 39% in 2020. And in fact, their final report contained a number of recommendations. Firstly, Google should amend its public material so that it clearly describes how Google uses first-party data to provide ad tech services. And Google should amend its public material so that it clearly and unambiguously explains how it uses data that is collected from its consumer-facing services, also known as first-party data, to provide ad tech services. And that should include a description of how both non-aggregated first-party data, data about a single consumer, and aggregated first-party data, such as combined data from multiple consumers, is used to provide ad tech services, which enables the display of advertisements on third-party websites and apps. And Google should make those amendments now and ensure that the information remains up to date. And they went on to recommend that the ACCC should be given powers to develop sector-specific rules to address conflicts of interest and competition issue in the ad tech supply chain. And these rules should apply to ad tech providers that meet certain criteria linked to their market power and or strategic position in the ad tech supply chain. And the ACCC should have powers to develop rules to manage conflicts of interest, preventing anti-competitive self-preferencing to ensure rivals can compete on their merits by having non-discriminatory access to certain services and to address transparency concerns. And the exact criteria to determine which ad tech providers and rules would apply to would need to be developed. Given current concerns arising from Google's dominance and vertical integration across the ad tech supply chain, the ACCC expects the rules would apply to Google. However, rules should be capable of being applied to other ad tech providers in the future if they meet the criteria. And they would also consider that any such rules should allow measures to be introduced to manage competition concerns arising from Google's data advantage. While Google states that it currently does not use its first-party data to target advertising on third-party websites, it is important that the ACCC should be able to address competition issues that may arise from Google's use of first-party data more extensively in the future. And this is particularly important in the light of Google's proposal to remove support for third-party cookies from its Chrome browser and replace them with its privacy sandbox proposals currently scheduled to be rolled out in late 2022-2023. Under those proposals, Google is proposing to replace the targeting and measurement capabilities of third-party cookies that are currently a key feature of ad tech services with new technologies that will run on Chrome. 
Google has stated that it is making such changes to protect users' privacy by preventing the tracking of consumers across the web. And they also recommended that the industry should establish standards to require ad tech providers to publish average fees and take rates for ad tech services and to enable full independent verification of demand side platform services. And additionally, to enable advertisers to assess DSP services fully and independently, industry is encouraged to develop and adopt a standard that allows full independent verification of DSP services. But if such voluntary industry standards are not effective in achieving transparency to meet the needs of advertisers or publishers, or if the standard is not made within a reasonable time period, the ACCC could introduce measures to address transparency issues under the rules proposed above and that the ACCC should be given powers to develop and enforce rules to improve transparency of the price and performance of ad tech services, the rules would apply across the Australian ad tech supply chain. Now, the point I want to make here is that there is clearly a big issue. You can look at it from the point of view of your information being used and harvested, and you can also look at it from the point of view of industry regulation. But some of these two things must come together. And it seems to me at the moment the basic assumption is from the industry that we are happy for our information to be used so that adverts can be served. But the consequences of this are actually pretty remarkable. And so as the Irish report highlighted, this is a big deal. It's probably the biggest data breach ever. And, of course, there are people making a lot of money from it, including the big providers. But trying to regulate it and trying to bring some semblance back will, of course, be contentious. And those big players with their big muscles and big balances and budgets will be able to fight back, which is precisely what they're doing. But the bottom line is this. We are effectively the cannon fodder that feeds the industry. And the information coming from our devices without our knowledge, is something which we need to be much more aware of. And by the way, just turning off trackers and other things don't necessarily solve the problem. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.